go. So do you consider yourself a fitness? Fuck yes, I guess. <laughs> and what are your goals as uh, My goals as a feminist, I suppose, are a little bit broader than most feminists, feminists in that my feminism is a part of my anarchism. I consider uh, the oppression of women to be one of a number of socially constructed hierarchies that I orient myself in opposition to and fill my time critiquing. Okay, and what is it about feminisms today that you value? Hmm. What is it about feminisms today that <laughs> well, I was raised to be a feminist by my mother, whose feminisms of the time had very different values than today's feminisms, to be sure. But today's feminisms is all about, or not all about, but very largely about intersectionality, you know, interlocking systems of oppression, and how socially constructed hierarchies can't exist in a vacuum. They're always operating at the same time. And so I think feminism is valuable because it points out how fucking complicated everything is and how impossible it is to get any sort of normative understanding of the world because everyone engages in different things. Um, and how do you see new media shaping feminisms in the past five years? Uh, well, the internet is a very powerful tool. Its anonymity is also really remarkable in the ways that both it allows women to engage the world in it without being judged as women, but it also allows men to engage the world with as much misogyny as they want to without any real repercussions. And so I think it's been a give and take in, in, in terms of new social media. So, uh, I don't think it's all good, but it's, it's definitely better to talk about it more than less. More avenues are always better. So, Su Su in Susan Douglas's article, she posits two really um, kind of general female archetypes in the media, one being the economically successful, one being the hyper feminine. Do you see those dichotomies playing out in real life, or is that strictly in the media? Do you think? Um, it's definitely not strictly in media. Like any ideals, they don't actually exist in the real world, but they're there's something that we structure our identities around, and so there are plenty of people who choose to perform femininity rather than pursue economic practice for themselves. But there's no reason you can't do both at the same time, and traditionally, that hyper-femininity is still in the interest of landing yourself a husband whose hyper-masculinity involves making a lot of money and buying you nice things. So I don't think they exist independent of each other or exclusively. Um, so, have you ever watched shows on MTV, like Jersey Shore or The Real World? I never watched Jersey Shore, but I have watched them. And what were your motivations for watching it and your reactions to watching it? Um, I guess probably when I first watched it, I was much younger. I didn't have a very thorough understanding of the world or how people engaged in it. The inclusion of the word real in the title led me to believe that there might be some reality to it. Of course, there wasn't. Um, but it was, it, it was presented as a way to engage different identities and see how they interact in the real world because none of us exist independent of each other, so MTV artificially forces everybody together, everybody. Um, but really, they're just archetypes of extremes that they went through an incredible number of audition tapes to get to, so it doesn't tell you. And I think in watching it, I learned that about stereotypes, probably. But it might have taken me a couple seasons. <laughs> Um, and do you think that your own feminist sensibilities were affected by watching it today? Uh, solidified, yeah. <laughs> it, it's sort of a know your enemy kind of thing. It, I, I couldn't have not watched MTV and became as much of a feminist as I did when I was younger because without MTV I wouldn't have understood how other people were capable of viewing each other because in my head it's all so. um, And do you think that feminist goals are accomplished today? I don't think feminist goals are accomplished. 
but I think there are a wide variety of feminist goals. I think the most high and mighty of the feminist goals, like gender equality, basic things like equal pay, are obviously not accomplished, but... Small steps, maybe? I, I, I know that other feminists are realizing their goals more often than I'm realizing I see that happening, for sure. Cool. Um, so, what do you think about prominent political figures like Sarah Palin and Hillary Clinton? Or do you think that they're contributing or detracting from the ultimate feminist goals? Well... I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a social anarchist. I'm also a bit of a political anarchist, so I think that putting a woman in, in, a, a woman in power is just a symbolic victory, more so than a real one. And this goes back to like first wave feminism when women were fighting for the, the right to vote. There were anarchists like Emma Goldman who said, you know, inclusion of women in the Obama system isn't going to make it any less rotten. You watch, they're not going to be maternal and good and keep us from going to war because the system relies on going to war, relies on the oppression of people. And no matter who's the president, as we can see now, it's going to keep being the case. Any president's not a good president. <laughs> well, that's